starting with that because it tells us a lot about the type of place that St Andrews is. So it's the east coast of Scotland, <coughs> um, just by the sea. Um, this, is above, this is one of the colleges, St Salvators. This is one of the accommodation buildings. This is the cathedral. This is a graduation hall. Um, as you see pictures of St Andrews, you'll start to realise that it's a university town. And it's one of the things that makes it different because people will often ask, what's the campus like or what's the town's like? The town is the campus. And we'll give you some of the statistics, but the students are about half of the population of the town. And the university buildings, the accommodation are in different parts of town. So the town, the university are pretty much one and the same, but that makes for a really tight community at St Andrews. So this is where we are in terms of um, getting here. Um, the nearest airport is Edinburgh Airport. It's about one hour away. And this is, these are our connections to elsewhere in Europe. Um, it's a different place from Edinburgh. Um, I live in Edinburgh and work in St Andrews. A lot of staff do that. I wouldn't recommend it for students, but it's not too far. It's not so isolated. It's about 55 minutes by train from Edinburgh. And London's a bit further, of course, um, but from Edinburgh Airport, there's lots of connections all over Europe. And from just outside St Andrews, real connections across the UK. This is another picture of St Andrews. I know that you think I'm just showing you nice pretty pictures, but these pictures tell you quite a lot of the type of place that St Andrews is. And as I mentioned at the beginning, it's the, one of the key things that makes the university different and it makes it a paradise for some people, but for some people they'll look at it and think I prefer being in London or Manchester or a bigger city. Um, you can see here it's not London, it's not Tokyo. Um, it's a smaller town, a very historic town. This is a cathedral at the front. This is the St Andrew's Castle here. Um, some of the beaches. Um, this one's called the West Sands, where my sort of cursor's hovering over. Um, St Andrew's very famous for golf, known as the home of golf. And these are the golf courses at the top of the screen just here. Golf is not compulsory, but um, I know golf is really expensive in Japan. If you were playing golf at St Andrews, even in the championship courses for a student, for two courses, it's only £45 for one year, £245 if you want to play all seven courses. So it's not a bad place to try it. As it's a university town, I mean, this is the town of St Andrews. The street in the middle here is the main um, shopping street where there's about 60 cafes, bars, restaurants, um, loads of places to eat out. Um, but the university buildings are all over the place. This is a library, international relations, classics, sustainable development, economics, where else? Modern languages, psychology, medicine, biology, chemistry, the sports centre up here, the accommodation here, 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 all over the place. So what does it mean? The university buildings, the accommodation buildings are in different parts of town. Um, so when you're changing class, you might be walking past the castle or walking around past the cathedral or down through some of the lanes, walking around town. Um, it brings the town and the university together, but also everywhere is within walking distance. Don't need a car, don't need to get public transport, perhaps a bike, but everywhere is pretty much five to 10 minutes walk from everywhere else. So a super close knit, super safe environment. This is it from a bit higher up. So just pointing out then um, really the, the different parts of the university in different parts of town. And um, the newer part of campus is called the North Hall, which just means Northfield. And these are where most of the science buildings are, the School of Management, the Sports Centre, some of the accommodating buildings. And in the centre of town, um, most of the older university buildings, that's where schools like psychology, modern languages, international relations, things like that are located and the library as well. Okay, so a bit more about St Andrews. Um, not a big place, 20,000 people. Um, I mentioned it's a really tight um, community, pretty safe, some nice lovely beaches and very cosmopolitan for a town this size. The reason for that is simply the number of international students at St Andrews. It's an old university, you'll probably know that. Um, the size of the university is just under 10,000 students very international in the Times Higher Education and um, who do rankings for university and like um, put us as the 21st 
um, most international university in the world looking at our students and staff. So we've got a real global reach. These are our students to give you a flavour and an idea of where they come from. So a small university in UK terms, under 10,000 students, most of them undergraduate students. Nearly half of the students are from outside the UK. That's a huge proportion. The biggest proportion at St Andrews are from the USA. So just over 1,600 students from the USA. Um, that's unusual for UK universities. Other big countries represented, um, China, um, just under um, 500 students, Germany, Canada, India. From Japan, um, there's between 30 and 40 students in the university at the moment. About 20 something of those students are undergraduate students. Um, about 10 to 15 are postgraduate students. From the undergraduate students that I know, um, we've got studying a wide range of disciplines. Um, one of the students I know, George Sato, he's studying marine biology. Um, another one of the students, um, art history. Um, two students I know from the Japanese um, group studying international relations. So it's quite a wide range of different subjects. In terms of postgraduate students, um, this is a spread of where our postgraduate students come from. Um, so again, different from a lot of other UK universities, um, truly diverse and even within, for example, the School of Management, um, no more than 20% of students come from any one country, which is something to say. So it means that in any class, there will be students from probably five or six different countries, but that's good. That means they're bringing their own point of view, their own ideas. Um, it's exciting as well, gives you a chance to make friends and get to meet folk from a wide range of different countries and backgrounds. Rankings, I won't go into rankings too much, but I will mention um, where they are and their context. context. <clears throat> so, um, in UK university rankings, Andrews tends to do quite well. Uh, it's usually, it's been the top five for the last um, six or seven years, but in the last few years, it's been either number two or number three. Uh, in the Guardian this year, um, Cambridge is number one, St so Andrews number two, Oxford number three. The rankings, though, that we're most proud about, I have to say, are the ones that talk about the quality of education at St Andrews. So our teaching quality, and um, you can see there's a gold award from the UK government here, and for student satisfaction. Student satisfaction is really important because um, whether or not you're happy, at university will have a big impact on your academic performance as well. And um, not just coming to study, you're coming to appreciate, enjoy, learn about a different culture, perhaps improve your English, make friends, connections, all these sort of things. The environment matters a lot. So that's why I keep going on about the type of place St Andrews is so that you can make the right decision. Yourself. But the students that do come in the UK's National Student Satisfaction Survey have voted as um, number one or two nine times in the last 11 years. So I'm going to make, this is where there's going to be detail on the screen. I'm not going to spend a lot of time going into it and I'm happy to share this afterwards. It's just to give you a flavour of the type of place that St Andrews is. I'm going to talk about undergraduate study briefly, then postgraduate study, I know there's students listening in um, interested in different levels of study. Then I'm going to talk about things like entry requirements and also um, some of the changes this year because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Changes to um, English language requirements and the tests that we accept. Also changes to the way we teach at St Andrews. So undergraduate study. Um, first. It's a bit different in Scotland than the rest of the UK. Why? One of the reasons is because high school in Scotland is a bit different from the rest of the UK. So degrees in Scotland are four years. Um, for science degrees, though, um, students who are doing qualifications like IB or A-levels can go straight into second year for most of the degrees. Um, the times for other degrees are longer than the rest of the UK. Um, Five years for sandwich degrees, those are degrees where you might spend a year in industry. And for postgraduate degrees are the same as the rest of the UK. So the undergraduate degrees, an extra year. What's the difference? 
basically the extra year means that you do more. It doesn't mean that first year is easier. So this gives you an idea. Um, so England degrees are three years. The degree system in England is perfect for a lot of folk. It's quite a, a bit more focused. And the reason it's high school in England is also quite focused. Students typically do A levels. So focused A levels, go on to focused degree. Choose a subject, or perhaps choose a subject, study that for three years. A lot of pre pretty good universities in England, Cambridge, Imperial, all the rest of it. The UK, the USA, a bit more flexible. In the USA, um, at the beginning, students often study a core curriculum. So that might be, you might apply to do psychology, but you might still have to do some mathematics or some other subjects. Then a bit broader, then choose your major uh, at a later stage. What's it like in Scotland? Scotland's in the middle. It's to some extent a mixture of both systems. In Scotland, for the first two years, students typically study three subjects. You still apply for a subject, but students typically study three subjects. And it's good because you can choose the subjects. You can choose related subjects, or you can choose subjects that are quite different from each other that might um, maybe interdisciplinary um, style of learning. The end of second year is important in Scotland because it's only at the end of second year at St Andrews and other universities in Scotland that students decide their major. They decide what they would like to do as their degree. Why is this good? Because it means you can change your mind. It means you can find out about subjects that you didn't know about and you find out you're really good at them or they might be useful to you. It also means that you can find out that the subject you studied is maybe not your perfect subject you want to change. That's fine. Easy to change. I'll give you a few examples. So this is an example of students went to study ancient history at St Andrews. Um, first, first two years, three subjects. The student has decided at the end of second year, stay with ancient history. That's fine. First and second year, same combinations. But at the end of second year, this student has decided, actually, I prefer French philosophy. Can I change? The answer is yes, no problem at all. So over 40% of students at St Andrews change major from what they first applied for in first year. And we think this is a good thing because we think this means that they're finding out about new subjects they might not have tried school or they might not have known that they were so good at or they were so useful for them. Science is a bit different. Um, science um, pick up three subjects in your first year, narrow it down in second year to two, then for your final two years again you can pick one or two of them. So these pathways show pretty much arts and science but what I would say is a lot of subjects in the university are what we call cross faculty. So that means that you could study them, um, you could do a mixture of science and art subjects. To make the point, I'm going to give the example of a Hong Kong student at St Andrews. He's now in his fourth year of computer science, but he applied for psychology. In his first two years, he did psychology, computer science and Arabic. He'd never done Arabic before in his life. So he'd done these three subjects, psychology, computer science and Arabic. He picked psychology because he enjoyed doing that at school, but he discovered that university is a bit different but he found out he was really good at computer science. He's now um, got a job with Microsoft. At the end of second year, he decided he only wanted to do computer science. So he changed from that, those three, to computer science, and that's what his degree's in. So this is a really flexible structure that really does allow you to find out what you're good at, what's useful, then make up your mind at the end of second year. So it's a, something quite unique about the Scottish university system. So teaching. <laughs> so Andrew's small university, small classes. Um, the student staff ratio is it's actually one to eleven point seven or something like that. I put one to twelve here. Um, but generally speaking, pretty small classes. That means it's easy to get to know your classmates. It's easy to get to know your teachers. It does make a difference. It means you can't be anonymous. Um, I went to university in Edinburgh. Edinburgh, big university, great university, but you can be anonymous. You can disappear um, if you want to. Um, St Andrews is a really small university, it's hard to hide, it's hard to be anonymous, but that's a good thing as well, because it means if you want to get help, it's easy to get. Um, you get to know your teacher, you can just go in and speak to your teachers um, pretty much any time. Classwork, a mixture of independent study and examinations in and out of class. 
Um, each of the times I've put here 12 to 14 hours. I'll put that in context. Um, for students doing mainly art subjects, they may only be in class 12 to 15 hours a week. For students doing science subjects, probably around 24, 25 hours a week. The total study time, though, no matter what you're doing, should be about 40 hours per week. That's probably um, fewer hours than you're doing at um, school in Japan. Um, but for students just doing 40 hours a week in total, independent study plus um, time in lectures, labs, tutorials, that should normally be enough. The uh, thing for art students is most of your study time is independent study. So you can decide when you want to do that. You want to do it in the morning, you do it in the morning. You want to do it at night, you can do it at night. So it's up to you to manage your own work schedule, which can take a bit of adjusting, can be more difficult for some students than others. I'm going to mention a few changes um, for this year, for students thinking of starting this year. And depending on how um, the COVID-19 pandemic is on, this may extend into 2021 as well. At this stage, we don't know. Um, so what we've decided to do is what's called dual delivery teaching. So it's giving students the option um, of turning up in St Andrews and doing face-to-face -face classes, which is what we're really good at. Um, a traditional um, approach to learning or doing if it's not safe for you to travel or if you want to delay traveling you can do online classes then arrive at St Andrews when it's safe to do so. So the choice is up to students and this is for undergraduate and for postgraduate. So the times, the dates are orientation week um, starts on the 7th of September this year. That's when you do all the administrative things that you have to do, register with a doctor, open a bank account, um, sort of, um, get what's called a biometric, biometric residence permit, essentially a visa, all the administrative things. Also, you can find out about different clubs, sports clubs and university societies and things, get to make friends. Academic year, that's to say classes start on the 14th of September. These dates are the same, whether you start online, or whether you arrive in St Andrews in person. Okay. So how will the online dual delivery work? If you arrive in person, you arrive in person, you're in St Andrews, and here, um, safe and practical, the classes take place as normal. The classes may be a bit smaller um, because we're trying to keep people a bit further apart from each other to reduce the chance of infection spreading and the like. Um, but where either students would wish to start slightly later, or if it's, they're not able to travel, or it's not safe to travel, students can start online classes. Then as soon as it's safe to travel, travel to St Andrews and join their classmates in St Andrews. Okay. Online learning, I know, is not most students' preference. Most students would prefer to be in St Andrews, getting to know their friends, getting to know the place, seeing what it's like, trying strange food, all these different things. It's not um, plan A for most students. What I'd say though, I've sat in in some online seminars, some online classes, and the level of interaction is that actually surprised me. Um, students still do, to some extent, get to know each other and keep in contact online and chat to each other, even outside class. So there's still um, a chance to get to know other folk in your class and the like, but even in life, we know you might be used to chat chatting to friends and communicating in social media but it's not as good as meeting them in person, going out and meeting them one-to-one. Um, -one. Applications for St Andrews, um, still open for this year. Um, I won't go into detail here. Um, it'll take a bit more of an explanation. Uh, um, undergraduate applications are still open until the 30th of June this year, and um, <clears throat> medical applications are closed for this year. Postgraduate applications are still open for this year. <clears throat> for undergraduate and postgraduate, um, we look at things in a similar way, a mixture of looking at your academic background qualifications, a reference from a teacher supporting the decision to go to university, plus um, personal statement or um, example of academic writing to see that you're motivated and interested in the subject that you want to study. Entry requirements for undergraduate, um, again, won't go into detail, but for different qualifications, um, these are pretty much where they are. And um, this is a range of um, entry requirements. Um, I put some of the main ones here: A levels, IB, American type qualifications. Um, for students um, who are doing the Japanese 
high school um, curriculum, Japanese national curriculum, and uh, would normally need to do a foundation first. Um, different types of foundations at St Andrews. Um, for art students and for medicine, the foundation lasts nine months, then it goes into the first year of the degree. But for science students, um, the foundation goes into the second year of the science degree. So the purpose of the foundation is not to improve you necessarily academically, it's to bridge the gap between the style of education at um, Japanese state schools and the style of education in the UK and in Scotland, simple as that. It's more an adjustment of style of learning, language, getting used to um, university type environment, academic writing, referencing, things like that. A bit about postgraduate study. Um, I'll see where this picture is as well. It's quite a nice picture. This picture is St Mary's College. Uh, it's one of the oldest parts of the university. It's a really nice place to go and it's a sunny day. You can see folks are having a lie down here. Um, on the left of the picture is the School of Divinity. Um, so for students interested in divinity, theology, things like that. On the right of the picture is the School of Psychology and Neuroscience. So a super nice location for the School of Psychology and Neuroscience. Um, if you can imagine you were the photographer here taking this picture, behind you um, is our new music centre. So it should be open later this year um, and it's going to be a really good performance space. There'll be music teaching in there, music classes in there, lots of soundproof rooms for anyone who wants to keep up um, playing a musical instrument or keep up lessons um, for a musical instrument. So postgraduate students in St Andrews, it's a relatively small, quite a tight community, um, just over 1,700 um, students and most of them are from outside the EU, um, 46%. Um, postgraduate are the same as the, the rest of the UK. The titles for postgraduate degrees are a bit different. At most universities in the UK, postgraduate degrees are called MA this or MA that. At the six ancient universities in the UK, so that's to say Oxford, Cambridge, St Andrews, Glasgow, Aberdeen, Edinburgh, um, postgraduate degrees have different names. So they might be called something like MLIT or MSTUD. Um, so that's the, these degrees you can see down here. And they tend to be one year degrees for the taught degrees or the postgraduate research. Research degrees, full research degrees tend to be a bit longer. Two years for MPhil and three to four years usually for a PhD. Okay, so I'm not going to go into detail here. Um, but I'll share this presentation with you, giving a bit more information about the postgraduate degrees and the requirements of postgraduate degrees in terms of thesis and writing and the like. Um, one thing I'll mention here though um, is facilities and study and networking arrangements for postgraduate students. So postgraduate students, um, undergraduate students to study, um, but also it's usually the first time away from home. So making friends, getting to see a new environment is super important. For postgraduate students, often the main focus is academic study. They're also here to have a good time, but also but it's quite an intense year of study. So postgraduate accommodation is separate, but we've also got um, separate libraries and study spaces for postgraduate students. And we've got um, a college for postgraduate students called St. Leonard's College. And this is where postgraduate students can meet each other from different disciplines, share ideas, um, there's a dinner, um, different um, talks and the like that takes place. So it's a really good space for postgraduate students to get to know each other and learn about each other's study and research. Teaching takes place in the four um, faculties within the university. Um, at the bottom there, you can see the different themes for postgraduate teaching. Very important though is the one that deals with interdisciplinary learning and that's something that's increasing in importance. I'm not going to go through this list, um, <laughs> there's a lot on there, but the main point here is just to highlight the range of postgraduate degrees at St Andrews. Everything from obvious stuff, um, I'll find something obvious, where are we? Um, perhaps modern history or philosophy or something like that, to even things like romantic Victorian studies or environmental history and history of philosophy, things like that. There's so many different particular degrees. There's not many universities in the UK at postgraduate level that have such a wide range of very specific postgraduate degrees. A lot of these degrees there won't be very many folk interested in but the main thing um, to take away is just um, the importance that St Andrews puts into 
the full range of academic study and research and doesn't give up on what might be considered minority subjects. Um, here are some of the more um, popular postgraduate degrees um, through business, management, finance and economics. Most of the postgraduate degrees in St Andrews are advanced degrees, so you need the same or similar undergraduate degree. The ones marked red are what's called conversion degrees, you come with a different background. This is a bit different from a lot of other UK universities where about half the postgraduate degrees, especially in management economics, are conversion degrees where you can come with a different background and half of them are advanced degrees. Most of them at St Andrews are advanced degrees. In science and medicine, um, I've highlighted ones in red there again, and postgraduate degrees are one year, but the ones marked red um, have built in a lot of flexibility into these. These are in the School of Computer Science, um, but even within one year, we've arranged the degrees so that you can change from one to the other um, relatively easily, depending on your subject choice, because even at postgraduate level, students sometimes might want to change their mind. Social sciences, um, I've highlighted one again, and it's psychology, a popular degree, and this is a psychology conversion degree, we can come to a different background. Interdisciplinary degrees, got some of them here, we're trying to encourage more interdisciplinary learning at postgraduate level because we think it's very important that students at postgraduate level share their ideas, share their research, talk to each other. These are more of them here is as well, including degrees like sustainable development, international development practice, and these degrees have also got work experience included with them as well. Okay, PGT entry requirements. Um, I won't go through them in detail, um, but um, they are having a first degree with, you can see it there, GPA 3.3, B plus 76%. English language requirements, big changes this year because of COVID-19 as well for those who have still to meet their English language requirements. A lot of students for undergraduate will have met their English requirement already. Um, but it's often for postgraduate studies, students um, are planning to take a test round about now for English language and not all of the IELTS centres have been open. We know that. So we've expanded the range of tests that we accept for English language, now including things like Duolingo, um, different TOEFL tests, and a new British Council IELTS type test as well. So have a look at that website there. It gives detailed information on the new tests that we accept for English language, but also specifically gives the requirements for pre-degree, that's to say things like foundation or pre-sessional English, undergraduate and postgraduate. Okay, I'm not going to hang on, on about this, but normally we've got um, deposits for postgraduate students. It's a deposit, so it's money that students get back again off their fees. Um, there are deadlines here, but what I would say at the moment is a lot of students are hanging on making a decision at the moment, and we understand that. So if any student wants to delay their deposit, just get in touch with us, and we can usually arrange that. We understand that you may wish to delay before making a decision. Right, pre-sessional English. This, for, this is for students, postgraduate students, who wish to um, take an English language class before they start um, university. Um, often they want to do that just improve their English a bit, get to know the environment, improve academic English. Sometimes it's because the IELTS or other language result is just short of the requirement for the degree. Usually the pre-sessional English courses are in St Andrews. Um, COVID-19, different arrangements again. Um, there are two different courses, there's a 10 week pre-sessional English course, there's a four week one. The link underneath gives the requirements for both of them. So for the 10 week course, there's two different options. You can do it online for 10 weeks, or it can be online for the first six weeks, then in St Andrews for the final four weeks. The four week one, um, the classes can be in St Andrews or online, or you can start them online, then as soon as it's safe to travel, move to St Andrews. Similar to our main style of teaching in that we want to give students the option. Do you want to be in St Andrews or do you want to do it online? Do you want to start online, then as soon as it's safe to travel, move across to St Andrews? We want to make sure that it's suitable for you because we know in different parts of the world um, the situation with COVID-19 is changing at a different speed. So some places might improve um, sooner than others. I'll finish off with a bit about life in St Andrews. Um, strange man wearing a dress here. Um, don't call it a dress, it's called a kilt. Um, and uh, one of the university traditions, um, which is a torchlight procession that takes place once a year. Um, this takes place in the last day of 
April each year in the evening. Um, it's a procession to remember one of the locals in St Andrews um, who swam into the sea, a fisherman, to save five um, people drowning. So there's a torchlight procession um, at the last day of April. The students will stay up all night. They'll stay up on this beach here and they'll have a barbecue and things like that. Then at sunrise on the 1st of May, there's a huge mass swim of students into the North Sea where it's pretty cold at that time of year. Um, if you go on YouTube and just search for St Andrews May Dip, so the month of May, M-A-Y, then Dip, D-I-P, um, you'll see lots of videos about students swimming in the North Sea and getting wet and all the rest of it. Um, it's not compulsory. Some students stay on the beach, have a barbecue, um, prepare breakfast. Um, but it's one of the nice positions at the university. It really brings the whole together. Different clubs and societies. This is for postgraduate students and undergraduate students. There's no separation here. Um, undergraduate students will often have a bit more free time, but postgraduate students, if you just study, you'll go crazy. So it's a really good thing to um, mix in some sports, social life as well. There's over 200 different clubs and societies. A lot of them are sports um, represented by the folk standing in the pier here. Um, but this is a sort of an extensive list of the type of sports that we have. Um, the ones highlighted here <coughs> are what we call performance sports. So they come with a coach and you usually come with three training sessions per week. So this is for students who want to perhaps keep up a sport at um, a competitive level if you've been really good at it at school or university before. Include sports like water polo, tennis, netball, golf of course, basketball, um, rowing, football. Um, volleyball, ultimate frisbee, um, a range of other sports as well. Um, I notice there's a lot of lot of violence here, um, a lot of uh, martial arts. We've got um, Aikido, there's mixed martial arts, there's um, I think there's judo in here somewhere as well, kendo and jiu-jitsu. Um, there's a lot of martial arts. Um, the thing for all of the sports, whether it be performance sports or any of the other sports, is you can start at any level. So if you've been performing at um, competition level, um, you can join and we'll support you to continue doing that. If you want to try something for the first time, you can do that as well. A few of the traditions, I remember mentioned the May Dip down here, students um, going for a swim in the North Sea. Lots of other traditions, or well, some of them are really nice. And this one here is called Academic Families. And it's where first year students can get adopted by third year students and you end up with um, students with academic mums and academic dads, then when you become a third year student, you adopt a child and you get an academic son or academic daughter. Um, it's a really good way of getting to know um, other people in the university and just a point of contact sometimes if you've got questions or if you want to find something out. The good thing is though, these friendships and connections, they last way beyond university. And most of my colleagues that I work with studied at St Andrews and just didn't want to leave. They still talk about their academic families and their academic children and they still keep in touch with them. So it's a really nice way to sort of just help you sort of move into the university, help you sort of settle in. A bit about accommodation. For those uh, of you who have offers at the moment, um, whether you've accepted your offer or not, you can still apply for your accommodation. As long as you apply for the accommodation before the end of June, and then you have a guaranteed space in accommodation. Um, Accommodations in different parts of town. Um, some of it is really old accommodation. It's a bit Harry Potter, but in pretty good condition inside. It's like big dining halls and things like that. Some of it is brand new. Some of the accommodation just opened last year. Um, it's all in pretty good condition though, and it's a mixture of different places, uh, different types of buildings, but it's, they're all walking distance from each other. Nowhere is more than 10, 15 minutes walk from anywhere else. Normally, there's a mixture of single accommodation and shared accommodation so rooms with two people this year because of COVID-19 they'll just be single rooms so it'll just be one person one room so some of the rooms have bathrooms some of them um, en suite and some of them are shared bathrooms you choose which one you want of course there's a different price and there's catered accommodation and um, where you get your breakfast lunch and dinner and um, both at undergraduate and postgraduate level and the self-catered accommodation where you make your own dinners um, Self-catered is nice. It means that you need to learn how to cook. You can make friends in the kitchen. Um, catered accommodation is pretty good. Um, breakfast is like a hotel buffet style breakfast where you just go up and you can go up two or three times and pick lots of stuff, some healthy stuff, some unhealthy. Um, lunch and dinner changes every day. 
So if you're interested to see what it is, you can take a look at our accommodation website and the menu is on there for the next four weeks, what we're serving for lunch and dinner. I know that British food gets a, it's a dodgy reputation, um, but we try to keep it healthy. The ingredients are pretty good. We source them locally. The chefs try and be international. Sometimes they get it right, sometimes they don't. Um, but the food is pretty healthy anyway, and it's pretty varied and it changes um, every day. In the halls of residence, um, a good thing is there's lots of support. It's a place where you can get to know friends and um, make friends, but there's a lot of support in there as well. In each of the halls, there are members of staff living as full-time wardens. So they're there basically as big brothers or big sisters. Uh, if you're, there's a problem or you want to speak to someone and you're not comfortable speaking to your friend, you can have a word with them and they might be able to point you in the right direction. Can I mention a bit about careers? Um, you can see lots of different companies here that some of our graduates have went to work for. If you look at our careers website, it gives detailed information, not just on what our graduates do, but for all the different subjects we teach at St Andrews at undergraduate level and postgraduate level. So if you go to our careers website, there's a section called graduate destinations. So you could pick a subject, let's pick classics, just a random subject, Latin, Greek, things like that. You think, what do people who study Latin and Greek do? So you can click on classics for undergraduate and postgraduate, and it tells you how many of them go to work, how many of them do further study, what types of jobs do they do, what percentages of them do this type of job, what percentage do that type of job, or you may want to click on economics or international relations or computer science. But there's detailed information here about our graduates and what they've done after graduating. So it can answer a lot of questions about what can I do with a degree in history? What can I do with a degree in biology? And um, what type of job can I get if I've got a degree in management? That type of thing. Detailed information both for undergraduate graduates and for postgraduate students as well. So take a look at a careers website, it's pretty good. We've got a member of staff in the careers office. Um, you'll be happy to know her name's Ellen and she is there specifically to give additional careers advice to students from East Asia. Why? Because not everybody who comes into the careers office wants to work in the UK, some of them do. So for students, they can stay on two years after graduation and work in the UK without having to apply for a new visa. Um, some students will be interested in that. But a lot of students will be going back to East Asia and they might want to say, how can I apply for a job in Japan? Or what do I do if I want to apply for a job in Singapore? Oh, I'm interested in working in mainland China. How can I work there? So we've got a member of staff who's there to give detailed information, help and support for students um, applying for jobs and finding out about the job market in East Asia. So I won't leave this with you. Just about near the end of this talk. Um, it mentions what we want to do when you get here. Lots of student help and support. I mentioned those members of staff living in the halls of residence. We've also got folk in uh, centre, we call it student services, but it's folk there to help you for folk who need maybe extra help um, with academic writing, um, adjusting to university style essays or English language. You might be feeling homesick and want to speak to someone. You might have spent all your family's money and you need to help with finance. Um, some people might be getting a bit stressed and anxious, so they might even want to speak to a nurse, deal with mental health or things like that. So we've got members of staff, including mental health nurses working in the university. Most of the time, things are fine for students. It would be a bit strange though, if things were perfect all the time. People will get homesick. Um, some people will spend their money too quickly. Some people will get a bit stressed and anxious. The main thing is, um, we want you to know through the different things we mentioned here that there's help and support and advice um, available there. So just um, reach out to us and hopefully we can point you in the right direction. So I'm going to finish off with a couple of pictures of St Andrews again and I'll open up to questions from any of you, whether it be undergraduate questions, postgraduate or more generally about life in St Andrews. If I can't answer, I'll try and get back to you by email with a sort of better answer. But some pictures of St Andrews. This is one of the halls of residence. This is called St Salvator's Hall. This is an undergraduate hall, which is quite pretty. This is the cathedral at St Andrews, the ruins of St Andrews Cathedral. It's about 900 years old. And this is from the pier looking back to St Andrews. And 
finishing with that picture there of the peer work.